somebody's hand and then go shake somebody else's hand because that's how I would move it right and I could be this I love to greet people I've been trying not to greet because I don't want to spread it from person to person Holly I got a play part for you right here okay okay so thanks for being married for us okay good so time anyhow your mother's here by the way yeah Mother Mary, Mary's mother, Bev is Mary's mother. Your mother, so there you go. Okay, so anyhow, uh, we're working on a little bit of that to be a surprise when I'm a little surprised. So here's the stories for today. Can I tell you some stories for today? Come on in, John. CP time. Come on in here. You want to tell them about that? What? CP time. Hey, he's, he makes me late. Yeah, I, I believe it. <laughs> oh, no, I know what that is. No, means. seriously. I don't, he sure. makes me late. <laughs> so, okay, they're here. Now we can go. All right? John, here's a couple stories. You ready for this? Yes. Our little baby Sophia, our little grandbaby Sophia, very sick at birth. She didn't really have the division between chambers in her heart. Left side of her heart wouldn't hardly work at all. The Columbus Hospital told her that baby needed to be 10 pounds before we'll do surgery on her. They, we did, they did everything they could do. They hooked her to feeding tubes. They did everything they could do to try to get her up to 10 pounds. By four months, she's supposed to be 10 pounds. We're gonna have a surgery. We gotta have a surgery around four months, right? She's gotta be 10 pounds. We can't get there. The Dunham's had the same baby situation as us. They, they found the best surgeon in America at Cincinnati Children's. Gaggy mentioned to that surgeon, hey, we know a baby, same condition, having trouble gaining weight. Would you see this baby? He says, I have an opening to do surgery next Thursday. Yeah, I'll do the surgery on this baby. They said she can't gain weight. She can't. He said, listen, I'll take her at any weight. Her children said, we're not going to operate on her unless she's 10 pounds. 
So next Thursday, they went down, they loved the guy. Next Thursday, she had the surgery. He had an opening, boom, had the surgery. She spent nine hours in, in he did one procedure on her heart, thought about sewing her up, took a little break, came back and did another procedure on her heart. Over nine hours working on her in surgery, okay? A, a incredible surgery. When she got out of surgery, they hooked her up to an electronic speeder, electronic, uh, what do you call it, stimulator for her heart, boom, 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 to get it beating faster. They take the stimulator off after a couple days, her heart keep beating that fast. It's just like, yeah, you know? She gained a pound a week since the surgery. And that girl is gone, man. She is like gone. She's just taking off, you know? She's hungry, hungry, and going in. They said, they said that if, if they'd had that surgery in Columbus, that heart surgeon would only been able to do the first part of that procedure, would have sewn her up, and would have had to come back later and then open heart again on her. So we're very thankful to God for this amazing, just miracle, wonderful thing that's happened with our grandbaby. And it's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I'll tell you the next story, just real quick, just in Greek, yeah. It's just a small group. Mike McGelfrey. Does everybody know Mike McGelfrey? Mike McGelfrey told me this story today. Uh, his wife was having trouble with the bathtub drain. And uh, she put a bunch of water in it, put a bunch of Drano. They spent a whole bunch of money, went out and got a whole bunch of Drano, poured out the sink, poured out the sink, poured out the sink, poured out the sink. He plunged it. He did everything he could. Couldn't get nothing. Went out, you know. So he, behind the tub, there was an access panel. Behind the washer, he had to move the washer and dryer and everything. Get in this access panel. He pulls the trap down lead. We got Mike McGill was working on his uh, bathtub drain. Pulls the trap down. It's perfectly clean. He thinks, oh no. You know, so they try to run some more. They just can't get water. He don't know what's going on. He keeps working out. Working he runs a needle one way. He runs a needle the other way. He keeps working out. He can't, he can't find nothing in his drain. No purple hair? No. <laughs> he says he can just keep it exploring it. Keep it exploring. Keep exploring this drain. He realized the stopper was on him. <laughs> almost the whole day on his bathtub and if he just flipped the lever the water would have drained just fine and all that money on it oh my goodness i said my nice, welcome, nice welcome to my club <laughs> yeah. welcome to the club that i'm in so anyhow glad you're here this morning thanks for coming to church try to give you something there try not to spread germs good morning good morning some of you are in your perfect places i love it i love it so thanks for being here today uh Joe, you kind of went to Wednesday night worship, but a couple of the other people got sick a little bit. So we're just going to do some video worship this morning. Is that okay? I picked some modern songs that I like. I think you'll like. Okay? Four of those songs we'll play for you today. Justin's going to come. He's right here. We're going to do our announcements. And we'll just get going. You don't, listen, small group. If you don't want to stand, you don't have to stand. Don't feel pressure to stand. Just enjoy church this morning. And then I'll teach a little bit. Uh, we had a lot of fun teaching this morning, so we'll just do that again. I'm glad you're here. We're going to try our best. Let's some foreseen thing. We're going to try our best. I'm not the only vote in this. Just to keep church going at the normal times. Please. We kind of get disjointed and messed up if we don't do that. So we'll just try to keep going. If we have to play video worship, we will. Uh, Bev's up this next week, and she was saying, hey, can we have live worship? Yeah, we can have if we can't, we just do it again. The other, one. we're okay. Everybody's okay, right? We got a group of people that are pretty. Let me say this to you: everybody's getting through it pretty much fine. They're, you know, they have the yucky days. Don't know of anybody that is super sick. Joe Ford did go and get tested. We're concerned about Joe. I didn't mention that in the first service, but he was here. He came to church today. Yep. But. <laughs> The one we're the most concerned about is Dodie's little boy, Dryden, has a lot of uh, breathing asthma. Has asthma. So we're worried about Dryden, a junior high boy in our church, struggles some with asthma and now coronavirus. So other than that, everybody that I know of, I could give you the big list, but I'm trying not to read names. <clears throat> We know Dodie because Dodie's real out there, you know, and she's telling everybody, and people put on Facebook, but 
but I'm trying not to list names, but there's probably probably 15, 16 families affected by coronavirus, right? Okay, yes. How Tim surgery done the other day? Who? Tim? His knee or his hip? Tim had his hip surgery the day before Thanksgiving. Oh, okay, yeah, that's right. He stopped coming because he wanted to make sure he didn't get coronavirus before a surgery he feels like he has to have right away. So right. Tim, you might yes, remember yes. Tim Woodward. Okay. He uh, having a hip replacement. So I will tell you this, another thing, just just uh, uh, an added blessing to come into Renew Street Church. If you need a toilet, I got free ones. <laughs> free used toilets to anybody you want. Okay? They're nice, but I'll put new guts in them and but we got toilets here. We've been replacing stuff around here. It's been absolutely amazing. As we have put toilets in, we thought that'd be the hardest job in the church, you know, put 15 new toilets in the church. What's turned out to be the hardest is we're putting these touchless faucets in, and they're three or four hours a sink. Ugh! So they've been really hard on us. Dana's making us bend metal tubing. Ugh! Anyhow. How's Dana? Dana's doing fine. Dana's doing fine. I talked to him. Yes, sir. Um, you said we would clap for you guys that are doing the bathroom work and also for Colin today since he went here Wednesday for all the well, work. We're doing this bathroom work. Tim and Jim Lee and a bunch of them laid a bunch of ceramic tile. We were going to do that anyhow. But we hit that grant for $29,000 in fixtures. We bought $22,000 in fixtures, new fixtures going in everywhere. Okay, it's wonderful. We've underspent that grant by $7,000. So we underbought what we said. So we went back to the guys that awarded the money and said, hey, we underspent that by $7,000. They basically told us, hey, think up some more things to spend the $7,000 on. Bring it to the next meeting and we'll approve that. So there you go. What we thought was going to cost $29,000, we bought for $22,000. All new stuff going in. We can hardly keep up with it. we got to have it done by the end of the year. That was the deal because that money expired by the end of the year. So we're trying to push, 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 push. We got air cleaners on the furnaces around here and, and all kinds of stuff that we would have never spent the money on. Thank God, right? Now we got seven thousand more dollars to spend on coronavirus stuff. So we're we're just looking at the, what's the best thing to spend our money on into the future. Uh, but it gives us more things we have to do by the end of the year. Yeah. Right. Wow! <laughs> so we're just trying our best, trying our best, trying our best uh, to get that done. The other thing I want you to know is Colin has done some amazing work. You may or may not see it. We, we have two computers that run things in the front. They were totally independent. One did one thing, and Colin's been able to cross those things across where we could switch stuff around, and we're able to send signals now over to a new recording system we got. We're trying to get our recording stuff better. Um, and we can send direct, direct signals over from our PowerPoint stuff, from everything over to this recording. So the video on our recording stuff is getting a lot better. The video in the front you see is getting a lot better. Things can cross the screens. We can move stuff around. It's wonderful. Colin's done a big bunch of work on that. We're so thankful. He's right back there. Any, anyhow, uh, wonderful. Uh, for We're recording right now. I, I don't know if this is going to be the one we put out there or not. Chris picks the one. but. Um, what was I going to say? We know we're still having some tr have audio trouble. Last service had a hum in it. Mm, the whole way through. We have no idea where that hum came from. None whatsoever. But we're trying to figure it out. Okay? So we got video way better in the signal we're recording. We're working on the audio. If people are watching right now, we're trying. If it's humming right now, I'm sorry. So we're trying to figure that out. Um, uh, we've added so much movement and some of that stuff. We bought old used iPhones here that have great cameras on them for super cheap because that's cheaper than a real regular camera and they do a good job and we can move chips in and out of them. It's really amazing how we, so we're doing brilliant stuff. It's just taking us a while to get it all working. So can you thank us? Can we praise you guys? For Listen, please don't because we want our reward in heaven. <laughs> right, Colin? Just give him a hug. Yeah. Just give him a hug. He loves that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Have I done sufficient? You've done it. Yes. So that's where we're at. We're Colin, uh, Colin, Colin. I can't get my own boy's name right. 
Uh, Connor's taking up the offering there. Uh, anybody want to share anything? Add anything? We're hoping in December, every service, even Wednesday night, to have a little drama and a song. So if you'd like to sing or have a little drama, I just asked Bev, she said you coordinate the singers. So if you'll just go see Bev, she'll put you on the list for a Wednesday or a Sunday. And if we can't come up with enough, we'll double you up. So if you want to sing more than one, we can do that too. But if you'd like to be in a little drama, they'd like for John to be a little spot in a play, if you wouldn't mind. So he was telling oh, me I thought play. you were going to have me do a solo on my kazoo. Do you want to? No. <laughs> so, if you'd like to be in the little genres we're doing, or some way sing over Christmas time, we're going to try to have, instead of a big Christmas play, when everybody get together, we're going to have just little individual things, okay? And we may, we may take the Wednesday night drama we do, and the Sunday drama we do, we may bring the Wednesday into the Sunday, you know what I mean? So we have two little dramas on a Sunday that we can start. So, we'll just get that figured out, but... Questions? Do you have any questions? I just no. I just wanted to tell everybody tonight. He he he'll get these announcements. Oh, is he gonna do it still? Okay. I, I'm here just rambling. Okay. His yeah. job to make it happen. Good deal. So, I'll get out of the way. <laughs> See you in a minute. Okay. Hope you enjoy the worship today. We love you, Pastor. Thank you. <laughs> we love you back. So I just uh, want to say good morning, everybody. I uh, it's 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 kind of redundant to have me come up here right after him sharing all this stuff, but. I know as a pastor, I love you guys. I, I love, I, I truly mean that. I love you. And I pray that your Thanksgiving this week is absolutely amazing. I, I know the world is telling you it's broken. It's not going to be okay. But God's saying it is. And he Amen. is faithful and good. And yes. just am excited about that. Because, you know, and we can have a great hope in that. You know, when people are sick, it's, it, it sucks. It, life is hard. And, and things are disappointing. And we don't want it to be that way. And. And, but we can't change it, but we can talk to the Lord and lift those things up in prayer and, and seek Him and, and, and be grateful for who He is and what He's done. And, and when I look around, just grateful for today and opportunity. Uh, see Drew, right? What's up, Drew? How you doing, man? You doing all right? Yeah, doing good. Glad to see you here. And uh, Just uh, excited we could gather together today. Tonight, there is the Truth Project, uh, 6 p.m. here at the church. Uh, so welcome to come to that. Uh, we're going to try to have... Uh, uh, Bible study tonight for the youth. We're actually going to have it upstairs tonight, uh, just now over at my house. Uh, so, but we'll still have food. Just let me know if you plan on having bringing the youth. I don't want to get a bunch of food and then no one show up because then I'll have to try to eat it all. <laughs> That's not good. Uh, and and uh, um, so, just uh, excited we could gather together today. Um, lots of lots of things coming up that 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 God's right in the middle of that we're we're encouraged by and blessed by. And so. Welcome to church, everybody. Let's pray. Father, just thank you, thank you, thank you for who you are and all that, all that you've done and all that you do. God, I pray right now in this place that uh, you would just come. Lord, you know the, the hurt and the broken and the, and the sick. Lord, you know the confused, the lost. The, God, you know our needs and our wants. I pray that we would be a people, that we would be a church just to always seek you, always pursue you, always give everything to you, Father. With, with our thoughts, our words, our, 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 our everything. So God, we just ask that you would come, be in this place, Lord, I pray that, that we would just seek you with all that we are. Pray that you bless the offering, that you'll be done. And, and God, I, I just pray that you would move in, in mighty ways, God. Blow us away in, in just what you're doing. Lord, I pray that your light would shine bright in, in the darkness, Lord. Darkness can't coexist, coexist with light, Lord, and that's what you are, light. So, Lord, I pray that this week we would be so grateful and, and, and just in remembering all that you've done and all that you will do. God, I pray that you would be our great hope. Be with the sick, Lord. Bless them, bless them, bless them, Lord. So we love you. We thank you for this time. We ask that you would come to this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We love good, that's good, that's good. That really good. All right, thank you for coming to church today. We're going to keep at it here. Uh, unless uh, otherwise noted, we'll just keep on trucking, right? Glad you're here. He will stay in here and worship some more, doesn't he? Oh, and yeah. like it. Yeah. <laughs> He's running after more here. How are you? Good to see you. 
Uh, bum, 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 bum. You know, when the coronavirus thing started, March, sometime back there, and uh, shut down there for a while, pastors just go into teaching mode. That's what we do. So we just started teaching the Bible. We started teaching in Acts. Actually, I did a Revelation study for a while. And, yeah. and then we jumped to Acts. And we went from Acts all the way through Jude. All the way. Every, just a great study for me. I, I will tell you that to study and preach has a great impact upon me. And uh, just learning, learning, learning. What's great is you get the Word of God in you. And in moments where you just, something recall happens. You know what I mean? And God's Word just ministers to you. And the more you get God's Word in you, the more God's able to just do reflect and and remember and pull out God's word and God's word's faithful and so we got all the way through Jude right still in teaching mode right a little bit here where are we going to go now Genesis let's start the Old Testament here right let's start the Old Testament so we're in Genesis chapter 3 today I could have talked to you forever about creation right God spoke it was God didn't need a whole lot of time and all that. So God just created. God, not over millions of years, God created. God yeah, spoke, right. he was created. Right. Yep. Ah, crazy world thinks that it took millions and billions. We're in kind of this study on Sunday nights where man is trying his very, very, very best to figure out how things work without God. To find out it doesn't. It doesn't. They can go back and go back. So what they do is interject time. They say, well, it just took a long time for, for a million pieces to fall in the exact order they're supposed to be in. Somebody told me one time that if you took a piece to a Timex watch, put them in a paper bag, and shut that bag for a million years, the chances of you opening that bag and it being an assembled Timex watch are not very good. So you, you can shake and bake all you want, but... You can't do what God did, and he did it fast. You know what I mean? In fact, granted, granted, God created so fast that there were things captured in rock. And scientists can't figure out how did this stuff get captured in rock. Like, they're still scratching their head because they don't want to believe that God did it in, in a spoken word, created in a spoken word, something out of nothing. they got to believe that something came from something. The problem is they run out of something. When they get far enough back. So let's just put time in it. And time will somehow make the mystery okay. Anyhow, does it? But that's where we're at. We're in Genesis chapter 3 when the first big drama begins, right? Here's where the drama, the drama for your mama begins right here, you see? Yes. A woman was created. It's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> We learned so much from Genesis 3. I, I just look at this thing and look at this thing and look at this thing. It's really how the world still works today. It really is. Nothing, nothing's changed. This is Satan interacting with the first two people created. And it's still the same. It's all still the same. So we can get a lot out of Genesis 3. Now the serpent was cunning, was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. So this serpent, this snake, this whatever was slick. Hey, he still is. The devil is slick, man. He is super slick. He is figuring out a way. The Bible teaches that the devil forms a strategy against you. And in life, because I've done this long enough, I know the devil's strategy against me has changed because I matured and what used to get me doesn't get me anymore. So the devil's strategy keeps working. And the devil has a new strategy for me even now. And he has one for you. Uh, he'd love for you to get in that original strategy, you know, that he beat you up with for years. And you never mature out of that. And you just end up... I, I deal with people all the time, very depressed. People... Believe in lies, all kinds of stuff. And they, the, you can just tell, and I have to look at it and say, that's not true. 
That's not true. That No, that's not God. No, where did you get that? That's crazy. You let your circumstances... And, and a little voice whispering in your ear, and you put cir hard circumstances with a voice whispering in your ear, and all of a sudden, you're not good enough. You, 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 you can't do anything right. God doesn't love you anymore. We're in a, we're in a season right now where, where people who don't trust in God are dealing with depression. They just, depression, even with Christians, there's some worry and depression. And it's this thing where, whoa, God's given us some extra time. You know, they say television watching is way up right now. It's just way, way up. So people are going to advertising television and, you know, people are watching all everything and anything. And you can really study what's popular on television and figure out exactly where our culture is, you know. In any event, people are looking for something. And in this extra time, Christians ought to be praying more, reading their Bible, ought to be trying to interact with others, serving, all that stuff, you know. Some of us are still working. Some of us hadn't affected us as much at all. We're still just as busy as we were. And, but people tend, when there's time and there's a problem and there's not a solution, they tend to get their brain spinning to the place where Satan's able to be this slick guy with a strategy that's trying to get you. And it's true for every one of us, to everybody here. If you don't go to heaven someday, what's happened is the devil and his strategy has convinced you, hey, to not trust in God, you're not good enough, whatever those, those excuses are, but the devil's tried to cheat you out of what God paid for you Amen. and what God wants you to be, yeah. right? Yeah. So now the serpent was cunning. So he slipped. I'm just telling you, we're going to watch how he moves here. Uh, which, uh, which the Lord had, and he said to the woman, God has indeed said, you shall not eat of the, you shall not eat of every tree in the garden. God has indeed said, you shall, you shall not eat of every tree in the garden. I read that funny every time I read that. But didn't God say you could eat of every tree? Didn't God say you could eat of every tree? So he comes out at first, not with the full truth. You know, they can eat of every tree but one. But Satan's trying to come out and say, didn't God tell you you can eat of every tree? So Eve here, now, now I just happen to believe that, I don't know. I think that the devil had watched Eve's patterns and stuff, you know what I mean? I don't know if the tree was on the way to the bathroom. I don't know if the tree was on the way to the shopping mall. I have no idea where the tree was at. But I got a feeling, I happen to believe, that Satan, the serpent, was hanging in the tree. And it watched her and was there to catch her. And was trying his best to just twist off enough so she would eat off that tree. And he was determined some way, somehow, to get her messed up. But Eve at first here kind of fights back. The woman said to the serpent, we may eat of uh, the fruits of the trees of the garden. But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, you shall not even eat of it. Nor shall you touch it, lest you'll die. So she corrects the serpent and says, there's a tree in this garden where I suppose we are not even supposed to touch it. Now I happen to believe she was standing right there in the front of it. That's what I think. And I think Satan hanging in this is Mark's opinion. Satan hanging in it was this idea, it didn't kill me. You, that's why I think or touch it is in here. Because the instruction was, stay far away from that tree. That thing's going to mess you up. And as he walks by, the Satan is hanging in the tree. And, and he's pretty much saying, without saying, hey, I'm touching the tree and it didn't kill me. And the serpent said to the woman, you're not going to surely die. You're not going to die. And that's where I happen to have this theology that he was right there in the tree. Look, you're not going to die. Now, let, let me tell you something right now. Let me tell you something. What God says is absolute truth. And everything that he says, we not, 
I'm sure they thought as soon as they touched that, or as soon as they, they would drop dead. I'm sure that's what they thought. You know what I mean? That's I, I, what I would have thought. I, I've got all kinds of things. The Lord spoke to me. The Lord told me I'd work in Peru the rest of my life. The Lord told me that. I thought that meant he moved to Peru. But no. My daughter right now is building the most amazing stuff, is doing something. She, I'm telling you, here's what's happening. Peru is just a little bit ahead of us. I just want you to know. They're about to open back up. And God, for the last year or so, we built the biggest buildings we ever had, the most beautiful, the most safe. God has been building a year and a half now trying to get this thing ready, man. He, I'm telling you, they just keep moving. They just keep moving. They, just keep, they have not lost faith or lost heart. You know, they believe that God did it. God keeps supplying the money. God, and they just go, 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 go. Even though everybody else is stop, they just keep going, keep going, keep going. It's just like, so you know what's going to happen? Peru's been hit so hard that when it does open up, revival is going to begin to break out in Peru. They have nothing. Yeah. Yeah. They haven't been able to work. They're stuck. I mean, it's just a mess. They're, they're more hungry. They're more broken. They're more. And God has allowed us to build this amazing building. They're sending us pictures about stuff they're building right now. It's been so amazing. God has just been so awesome. And how you can believe. What God said. God told me I'd work it for the rest of my life. And I thought I'd going to be. God, God said, hey, if you touch this tree, you're surely going to die. The serpent's hanging in the tree saying, you're not going to die. But God has a way of speaking something to us, and we don't fully understand it. But it's all very true. Amen. It's all true. Yeah. Yeah. That tree's going to kill you. That tree, if you touch it or eat it, it's going to kill you. And Satan's trying to, his very best to say, no, you're okay. It's okay. One of, the, one of the big lies the devil says all the time is, oh, you're okay. It's okay. You got plenty of time. It's fine. No big deal. A little bit of this, a little bit. You're right. You know, even the church teaches grace, 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 grace. You're good. You're not going to die. Listen, if you touch or can go after the sin the strategy of the devil in your life, it'll cause you to surely die. Amen. Yeah. And God knows, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. So he's almost saying, yeah, well, God's holding back some stuff on you, yeah. you know? Yeah. I think he goes on here to say and it's, uh, uh, that, that you'll be equal to God. You'll be like God. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, what's she doing? What she Be careful, little eyes, yeah, what you see. see. Yeah. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. For the Father up above is looking down in love. So be careful, little eyes, what you see. Right? <laughs> Temptation is something you ought to run away from. She should have been, I'm t she should have been Jesse Owens right there running the other way. <laughs> God is, uh, he's running after me, you know what I mean? He, she should have been saying, God's been so good, I'm running. Man, I, she should have been saying to the devil, you see, devil, what I'm living in, man. I don't worship this. I don't put up with we, it. We're in this grave, man. Then there's, there's, there's peace and tranquility. That man you gave me needs some work. But other than that, we're good. In that moment, instead of having her eyes on temptation, she could have talked about the thousands of things that God has done great in her life. How God had given her life and God had given her good things. How they had fruit and they had this. And we have plenty. And we're doing really good. And God's with us, man. And God defeats our enemies. And God is trying to lift us up. And God comes down in the garden every day. Yeah. Instead, she's having to talk with the devil. Flirting with the things. God told him, I am determined in my life. I want to think on those things that are good. I'm determined. I know if I get in the complaining mode, oh my gosh, I've told you this before. Every time I got in a real bad complaining mode, the Lord would send me to Haiti. <laughs> I get to Haiti, I realize 
Lord, they're eating dirt in Haiti. God, it's 115 degrees here. And you, I can't sleep at night because I'm sweat running in my eyeballs. Mosquitoes are everywhere. Nobody's got nothing. I come out of Haiti every time going, God, I thank you. I, I just been trying to stay in this mode where, Lord, I'm thankful. I'm so <laughs> thankful. This week's Thanksgiving, God, I am so thankful. Could I talk about everything that's broken? Sure, I could. In fact, I like to at times. <laughs> but God has been so good. We sing that song. Your goodness is running after me. God, you're so, so good. But here, that's what she could be doing. But no, she's standing in front of this tree, having a conversation with the devil, thinking the devil's going to tell her the truth. Love this, you know, this idea of a mouse sees that peanut butter on a mouse trap, you know what I mean? Or cheese, or a, a worm on a hook. Sometimes fishermen dangle real fancy stuff down there, you know, things that shimmer and move like a like a delicious dessert, you know, for a fish, you know, and they they move it around. Fishermen are just good at, you know, whatever, making a movement. And that fish, bam. And as soon as the Lord, the the, 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 the devil can get you, bam. Good things, good things happen. Bad things, bad things happen. If I plant a watermelon seed. I'm going to get a watermelon, right? The wall of the harvest. If I plant division, if my mouth plant, plants negativity, what am I going to reap? I'm going to reap all that stuff. I'm going to reap. She's having a conversation with the devil. She put herself in a position where the slyest dude in the field has got her ear. I happen to believe that Adam wasn't the one he was targeting because Adam had been in that in that garden for a long I think a serpent had been in there since God created the serpent. That makes sense? And Adam was is in there too and he wasn't around yet. And I think I think I bet you that serpent had tried to talk to Adam several times and Adam was just stubborn enough to say Shut up. The Lord comes down here every day. I'm gonna do what's right. And I'm not saying women are worse than men. I'm not trying to say that. Maybe. Anyhow. <laughs> my wife says, man was the prototype. You know what I mean? And he got all the flaws out of the female when he made her. So that's just what it is. The female is more perfect species than the... And that's probably true. That's probably all true. Right? Yeah. You, ever, you ever followed the person... My wife's talking back there to Bev. That ain't good. Ever follow the person, the lady that has the bumper sticking, my husband, the king of idiots, or something like that? You ever seen that? You ever seen that whole thing? Tim, it's awful. Isn't how they make fun of us. We take them to high heights and they make fun of us. Isn't that right? In any event, the woman saw the tree was good for food. And the tree was desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruit. Now as soon as she touched it. She ate. She also gave to her husband with her. Was he there that whole time? And he ate. I tell you, the joke, one guy's listening to said, uh, "I like that." One guy's listening to said, "This was the first atom bomb, <laughs> right here. This is the first atom bomb." Okay. <laughs> the eyes of both of them were opened. They knew that they were naked. Sin instantly, hey, changes your perspective. Sin has a, a way quickly of causing you to be broken. 
Everything can be going fine, but you, you, you mess with sin, and all of a sudden, life is up in the air. Everything that they knew changed. What was God trying to do? God was trying to protect them from, from any worry whatsoever, right? He was trying to be their God. He was trying to be close to them. He was trying to, he gave them everything they could ever want. They disobeyed him. They sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. And they, they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. I've seen people do that. They start doing wrong. Guess what they do? They run away from church. They run away from God. They start being hard to find, hard to... It's not very hard. Listen. We know this, and we're not trying to judge people, but this idea that we don't know who's a real believer. Listen, if you're a real believer, nobody has to tell. You don't have to tell anybody. It'll just be known, right? It's not hard to know if you believe in God, right? And it's not hard to know if you're running away from him because all of a sudden you try to get in an isolated place. You try to... You just try to, you're a whole different person when you're running from God. All of a sudden, you've got a whole new set of phrases, a whole new different set of ideas, whole other things you're pursuing, a whole bunch of other stuff. Listen, when you're running from God, you're not the same person. When you messed up, all of a sudden, your brain is messed up. You've given the devil a foothold now to begin to disassemble how you feel about you. When you mess up like that, the devil then throws in this thing called guilt, shame, embarrassment, right? And he just, he drums a drum that causes you just to run away. I'm better off, hey, hiding myself. Depression is a, really a, a problem with people trying to hide. Trying to escape what's hard. Often because of choices they made or, or, or things that haven't gone right. So the Lord comes down. Isn't that interesting? The Lord still came down. Isn't that, isn't that very interesting? The Lord came down. The Lord didn't back away. The Lord isn't. The Lord is faithful. If the Lord came yesterday, he's coming today, right? I'm just telling you, God just is faithful. God is faithful. God is very faithful. God is good. God is good. He shows up. Where are they? Not, not like he didn't know already, but he tried to ask these questions so they will confess their sin. And I know just working with people, the best thing that can happen for them is they confess their faults. It brings people, repentance brings people back towards God, brings people back towards health. Does that make sense? When people start acknowledging they've done wrong, so God starts asking these questions to get people to begin to acknowledge what they've done because he wants to bring them back to repentance. So God is in the garden and they're hiding themselves behind the trees. Isn't it, isn't it so foolish? You think you can hide from God? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> you can't hide from God. There's no way you can hide from God. The one verse talks about you go to the bottom of the ocean, to the depth of the ocean, God is there. You go to the highest mountain, you get on a space shuttle and go up to a and God is there. You can't escape him. Amen. Right? That's right. But in some way or another, when we don't do right, we go in this hiding mode. Choose the first step. Second step is start to figure out who we can blame. Usually, <laughs> right? Then the Lord said to Adam, said to him, where are you? Like he didn't know. He knew. He's trying to get Adam to confess, Right? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told you you were naked? You've been running around here with nothing on for, you've been a streaker at the supermarket, right? <laughs> I'm trying to get the words to the, they call it the street. <laughs> at the gas station, there were three or four scenes there. What, what? What was it? Yeah, was that supermarket? Well, at the supermarket. Yeah. yeah. Didn't have nothing on but a smile. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> One of the lines. 
Here it comes. Look at that. Look at that. And there he goes. Look at that. And he ain't wearing no clothes. <laughs> that old song they had out. But everybody was drinking at the ballpark and all that stuff and fun. And anyhow, who told you you were naked? You've not been. You haven't had any clothes on the whole time. What? Have you eaten from the tree? See, God knows. He's just trying to get them to confess their sin. I've had interactions with people who I know exactly what they're doing. I had a man that I was dealing with. He knew exactly. And this is where I got with him. He would not confess what he was doing. And I just had to get to the point with him where I said, listen to me. I want you to know something. I want you to know I know. You can say whatever you want to say, but I know exactly what you're doing. You're not fooling me. You can lie to yourself. You can lie to everybody else. But I want you to know, I know what you're doing. Yeah. Go ahead. I don't think you're ever going to confess it. If you can begin to confess it, God will begin to heal it in your life. But you won't confess it. And here I am. I'm the guy trying to help you. I just want you to know I know. That's how I'm going to leave this. When you're ready to talk to me in a real conversation, I just want you to know I know. I hear back from other guys. Mark's making stuff up about me. First of all, I didn't say anything to anybody else. I had a conversation with this man. Hey, and he knows I know. But when people don't want to confess their sin, God still knows Did you get off that tree I told you not to get off of? We switched strategy here. The man said, the woman whom you gave me, yeah. she gave me of the tree and I ate. Yeah, it's her fault. Stay gone, yeah. boy. Yeah. Her fault. Yeah. It's all her fault. That's like the second or third thing we do, you know, in, in trying to get out of what we did that was wrong. Somebody else's fault. What was the he hauls skip uh, or... or Ethel made me do it, or the devil made me do it, or somebody made, somebody else did it. Somebody else's fault. It's always somebody, somebody else's fault. I, I've been in, I've been in court, in court many times. I've probably been in courthouse, in courtrooms more than y'all. Not because I've been in trouble, just I've been in courtrooms. And and what's amazing about a judge is he cuts through all that, and he gets right down to the point where. You know he's looking at the facts. He's looking right at you. And he wants you to answer for what you did. Yeah. And that's where God's trying to take this conversation. And the understanding is that at some point we'll all stand before God and he'll know exactly who we are. We can't hide from him. We can't blame anybody. My salvation has nothing to do with my wife or with my children or with my parents. I can't blame my mistake or my sin. I can't blame it on anybody. God doesn't have grandkids. Right. Amen. I stand before God for me, and I want to say naked. Just because I don't want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing on but a smile. <laughs> hey, for me. For me. Hey. I, I, I got a feeling it's a judgment seat of Christ. The big white throne judgment, the big one, you know. There's going to be all these people that are going to go through the same list of. Because God will, I think God's going to let you talk. I, I just know judges enough to know. They'll let you talk yourself. Hey, they'll let your own words you know, put that noose around your own neck. And, 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 and he, people will be saying, well, it wasn't my fault. It was this fault. You know, that wife you gave me or that thing you, or this thing. Or God, I had to live right across from this. Or, you know, that happened or that. But I had this car wreck and, and I had to. She gave me the apple. The Lord's. Judgment Day. 
At some point, the floor opens up. I don't know if that's how it's going to work, though. That's what I always see. Stand there before God. You, you can't take responsibility. A lot of people will not take responsibility ever. If in the tribulation they will curse God, in the middle of a pandemic they won't recognize God, in the middle of a country who's divided so much that half the people are one way and half the people are, they won't recognize we need God. I mean, that, that's right in front of our face that people won't acknowledge we need God. God. God is the only one who heals. God is the only one big enough to solve our issues, right? In a country, in a nation that was founded by God, they won't run to God. At some point, they'll stand before God. The, the hatch will open. Go! I don't know if that's how it works or not. I've never read that in the Bible any place, but all the adventure movies you know, somehow they, they get in the laundry chute or something and they go down and end up in the furnace room or something, you know. The <laughs> <laughs> said to the woman, why have you done this? The woman said, the devil made me do it. Yeah. She's doing the same thing. Yeah. <coughs> and I ate. And the Lord said to the serpent, because you've done this, you are cursed more than all the cattle. You went from being the highest. Hey. There's this kind of this lesson where in the end, the first will be last. And the last will be first. I know this sounds crazy, but, but if you want to be something in the kingdom of heaven, shoot for last place. Run for life. Choose to be a servant. Right? It's the only place where the servant's last place gets a crown. There you go. So you'll be cursed more than the cattle and every beast in the field. On your belly you shall go. You might see a snake. I mean, there's some that kind of raise up a little bit. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> a little bit of that stuff. and You know what I mean? Uh, but, and, and all you'll eat dust all your life. I'll put enmity, division, hostility between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. And he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. He shall bruise. See H there, capital H? Yeah. That's the first reference to Christ in the Bible. Amen. That's right. Jesus is going to crush Satan's head, crush the serpent's head. But he's going to be a bruise. To mankind's heel. He's going to be after us on our heel. He's going to be on our heel for our whole life. Right? Yeah. I will greatly multiply your sorrow in conception. To the woman, he says, right? To the woman. Here we go, ladies. This is what I know. This is all I know. <clears throat> There's so much gets explained here about the difference between men and women in this right it seemed like the woman was in charge to me before this, right? <clears throat> but God structures some things here because of their sin. God, in dealing with sin, hey, wants to restructure your life. God will put boundaries on you. In the, well, Acts 17, Acts 15 says this idea that God controls the boundaries of your dwelling, the times of your living, the boundaries that you might grope for God and find Him. God will put you a little bit in a box because you're going to have to seek God in the place that you're in in life to get out of the trap sin has created for you. You get that? Because sin will entrap you. The only way you're ever going to be free in this world, we were singing a little bit ago. Listen, I, I don't know about you, but when I feel the most free in my life, is just in the middle of this worship song where I just connected with God in it, and there's just a minute where I can just kind of, and I know He's here, and I know He's here, and you know, and there's a minute where I'm just so free. I don't have pain in my legs. I don't have no nut. You know what I mean? I just kind of lost in it. Tears start running down my face, and I'm so free. I live for moments like that. I, I feel like those are just little glimpses of what heaven's going to be, you know? We're going to get there and it's just going to be free. 
you know, because of sin. So, he said to the woman, I greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Okay. I like to do it like this. God has this bunch of stuff because of their sin. God looks at a woman and says, Vroom. Vroom. All this stuff she didn't have before. That moment in time, you know what I mean? And God, Vroom. so all women have women stuff, right? Yeah. Men don't have women stuff. I get in a lot of trouble with all that. I'm just trying to leave it there. <laughs> but women got cursed with this curse, and you got related to having babies and, and all that stuff, you got, boom, you, boom, you, boom. I don't understand it. I try to stay far away from that stuff with a pop of can. I don't want to know. My wife will name a female body part and I'll say, is that like the baby hotel room? I, I don't know. I don't know what parts are. I don't even want to know. I don't want to know. I don't know. Your desire shall be for your husband. Listen to me. Not only did God put female stuff in females, he put in them a desire for a husband. Put it in. Every young girl I've ever known wants to grow up and get married. And she's got all these ideas. I've done four, nearly 400 weddings in my life. A bride always has this idea of exactly what she wants at a wedding. You want to know why? Because she's been thinking about it her whole life. And the, and the groom sits there and goes, whatever. Yeah. And I want, I want gray with some, some color. I don't even know what it is nowadays, you know. Some weird new color they got a weird name for. I don't even, you know, and hey, I'm, I'm in the five basic color groups and I don't get into all these different, anyhow, but she, she got the color picked out and she got, yeah, she got where everybody was a scent. She got the whole. Then this line comes. And he shall rule over you. I can talk about that. I, I don't. God didn't do that so a man could thump a woman. No way. God just put some order in the home, so there wouldn't be disorder. My wife's back there. I got to be very careful. I'm kidding. But I absolutely want her to be everything she wants to be. She's a volunteer for the state highway patrol. And she's used that to minister to highway patrol officers and be in the scene of car wrecks and pray with people. She, that my bag? No. Am I going to stop her? I don't think I should stop her from what I feel like God. No. She has dogs. 36 steps down, 36 steps up. It's not worth it. You take them out eight times a day. It's not worth it. I mean, that's an exercise routine just in taking your life. I'm serious. She's going to live to be 100 just because she has dogs and runs up down the stairs all day. She's been getting Connor. I feel bad. Connor, I the coronavirus. Will you take the dog out? Connor told me last night, I'm so tired. These are your dogs. I'm so fucking tired of dogs. <laughs> See, Connor, you're catching up with me. But if she wants a dog, that's okay with me. My job isn't to control. My job as a pastor isn't to lord over people. I'm not a boss. My, look, listen, authority really has this, this concept of trying to help people be their very best. The husband's going to, he's going to try to encourage the wife into being her very best. Right? 
This wasn't meant for evil. This was meant for good. This wasn't to thump people down. This was to lift people up. L listen, God is the head over a man. And God isn't trying to thump down on a man. God's trying to love a man and do his very best. God's trying to get the very heart of God, the very best, best, best out of a man. Inspire people. You know what I mean? If I'm in a position where God's put me over something and I have responsibility, my job isn't to beat it down. My job is to raise it up. Right? My job is to, to help it grow, to help it. At some point, I'm going to pass out of this world, you know what I mean? And somebody got to raise up, you know what I mean? Somebody's got to do it better than I did. It. I hope I can create a hundred people that I've raised up. You know what I mean? Just because I had some responsibility, some authority that God's given me in their life to lift them up. By the way, to men, the commandment is, love your wives. Husbands, love your wives. He goes on to say, dwell with them with understanding. That's a really hard thing to do. I, I have trouble. To love them. Just love your wives. Love them. Love them. So, if we're doing the biblical thing, wives, your husband been put it as a cover over you. He's been put as authority not to beat you, just to raise you, to help you, to encourage you. He's commanded to love you. See, these things that God did, even in sin, God was trying to set up something that would be beautiful. God is not trying. People read these verses, say, oh, you know, childbirth is such a. Listen, the, 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 the whole process of birthing a child bonds a mother to that kid so deeply that for the rest of her life, that kid is so connected. Does that make sense? You can't separate a mother from their children. You can't do it. What, what was good in the pain that would come in mother's birth? A bond that would never, ever, ever be broken. We think all this stuff bad or negative. No, God did these beautiful, incredible things in trying to deal with the sin issue. Trying to work beauty. Right? To Adam, he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree which I commanded you, saying, you shouldn't eat of that. Cursed is the ground for your sake, and toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. What's that saying? We shall be farmers? But thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat of the herb, herb, of the field. In sweat on your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. For dust you are, and dust you shall return. You men, you're going to work. Women get to be in labor a couple of times. You men are going to be in labor every day. Every day. So what do men do? Think about their work. Focus on their work. Why? Because that's what God threw in the men. Lee Myers, here. Have a great big old dose of work. Great, Lord. That's what I... And what am I about? What are we about? We're about our work. We're about a work or a nothing box. That's kind of who we are, right? Work or something we really enjoy. Where's, where's the female come in? Well, that's the... That's the hard part. Because they're complicated. It doesn't even mention female or children. Or in, the, in the woman's group, all that stuff mentioned. You know, a relationship isn't even mentioned in the, You see that? Here, John. Boom. Work. Does this say any place in there that, oh, you're going to be lovey-dovey with? It doesn't. Women get really frustrated with men, but from the curse from the beginning, men are going to be about their work. What are men thinking about most of the time? My wife will call me at work. What are you doing, honey? 
working? <laughs> when are you coming home? When I finished working, why are you such a jerk? <laughs> I'm just working. Okay, fine. <laughs> Get home. Come in. What was wrong with you today? I'm just working. <laughs> why? In rebelling, let me say, in rebelling from God, women don't want that authority in their life. Hey, and men don't want to work. It's rebellion. It's, it's not doing what God put in us. That makes sense? Yeah. And life's going to be hard. I mean, this is the first... Life is hard and you die. I mean, you know what I mean? That's what the bumper sticker is that comes out of this. Life is hard for you men. Life's hard and you die. You work. I mean, look how exciting. The sweat of your face will eat your until you, until you return to the ground. Oh, exciting. Oh, oh, oh yay. I try to get my kids to understand, as men, you better just get used to working because you better... Enjoy what your work is because that's what it is. And there'll be days when things are hard, and there'll be days when things don't work, and, and you just gotta work through it. And and even relationships will work for me. I don't know which, but relationships are even work. I gotta purposely make time for relationships, and it seems like work to me. Where my wife is just relational. For me, it's I gotta set aside time. I gotta, I gotta listen. Yeah, almost done. And Adam called his name of his wife Eve. He names her after, because she was the mother of all living things. She hadn't birthed anything yet, but she's gonna be the mom. From that curse, not because she birthed anything, but from that curse, Adam realized she's going to be a mother. So Adam, uh, uh, also for Adam and his wife, the Lord made tunics of skin and clothed them. That's John's big verse right there. John had some things to say on that. They went from living in figs to God. Now listen to this. Because of their skin, sin, the Lord killed something. There was a blood. There was something died. Sin caused something to die. To be the covering for man. It sounds so crazy, but you actually see it here. Something had to die so they, they would be covered. The same thing came along as there was a sacrifice for their sin. Something had to die. To be a covering for sin. And ultimately that covering was Jesus. You know. But sin brings death. Every time. And God moves them from the fig tree. To the to a leather thing. And. He. He. It looks like he. God made tunics. God. The first life taken was an animal life. Am I right John? For the purpose of. A human covering. The Lord said, Behold, the man has become like us. Us. Right? Very first word of the Bible. How's it go? In the, In the beginning, God. That word God is Elohim. There it is. I lost my brain. Elohim. Elohim is a plural word. So in that very Hebrew word, we know that there's more to the Godhead than a single... And here we see us. It's this idea that God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That's right. To know good and evil. Uh, at least he put out his hand to take also from the tree of life uh, that he's my live. Now at least he put out... So we're going to get him out of the garden because he's going to keep eating this. There were two trees in the garden that were... One was a tree you ate and lived forever. The other one was good and evil. And as soon as they had off good and evil, all of a sudden, 
God said, the best thing I can do for you because you're being disobedient has put you out on your own or you have to find me and I'm not going to give you eternal life until we work through the process of redemption. Can I get you down here? Therefore, God, the Lord, the Lord God sent him out of the Garden of Eden to, to the ground from which he was taken. And he drove out man and placed a cherubim in the east of the garden, a flaming sword, which turned every which way to guard the way from the tree of life. Did they make an Indiana Jones movie about that? <laughs> Here's the Romans verse that just kind of sums it up. Therefore, as though one man's offense, judgment came on all men, resulting in condemnation, even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. One man bombed. One man redeemed. Through a single man, sin came in. Okay. Through a single man, God gave us eternal life. Right? Pretty interesting chapter. And still how it works today. Yeah. Still very much how it works today. Right? Father, we give you time together. It's been good. Thank you for those faithful ones that have been in service. For those faithfully watching on television, we're thankful, Lord. Lord, bring us through, bring us through, bring us through. I believe, God, you're trying to speak to the whole world through very hard things. You're not trying to kill us, Lord. You're trying to bring us to redemption. We see it in this story from beginning to end. How God makes a way to redeem us into good things. Lord, help us to see you. Help us to find you. Help us, Lord, not to believe the lies of the devil. Not to get caught in this trap. But to trust you. To trust in your son, Jesus. And live in freedom and redemption through him. We give you thanks and praise for all that you've done and all that you are. For the very day we live in, Lord, and the opportunity to be used in hard situations. Help us to see, Lord, our opportunity and not the difficulty. Help us, Lord, to focus on what you're calling us to do and not what people are saying. Help us, help us, help us, Lord, in all these things. We give you praise now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thanks for coming, everybody. We'll just keep on trucking here, okay? Let you know otherwise.